today I'm flying an economy on the Scandinavian Airlines A330 with the family to try and answer the question, is SAS long haul economy any good? Because I could really see this going either way. Economy is economy, of course, and that means less comfort and less space. But there are five of us and I got an amazing fare direct from Stockholm to Miami. Will I regret it or did I manage to get some really great value here? Stay tuned because that's all coming right up. One of the best things about SAS Elite status is the ability to take up to four immediate family members into the SAS lounge with you. As I have three kids, that works out really nicely. The bread is 10 out of 10. The water is um, 8 out of 10. The food, 2 out of 10. And the special drinks, 0 out of 10. They don't have any taste. I hate it. It's bubble water. Yummy time! We have to change our passwords and wait for them to say add and, and update us and the signature and wait to say Miami. That's right. Are you filming? Yep. Why are you filming? <laughs> to set up the video. Alright, about a year ago we did... Oh. <laughs> Kids. Kids making noise. Almost exactly a year ago, we flew Tui down to Cape Verde on the 787. A year later, our winter getaway is Miami on SAS A330 Economy, but the front row at least, with three kids along. And I've got my classic Florida Marlins hat for the journey. I'm just sitting here awkwardly. <laughs> yeah, super cringe. Let's go to Miami. It's super fun to play Mario. Hashtag board not boarding. You're gonna go here. And Ingrid and I can go here. Right off the bat, the experience flying economy up here in row 30 is going to be a night and day difference to the rest of the cabin if you ask me. We have tons of space up here. It just gives you that extra breathing room, which is one of the things that's usually so lacking in economy. All right, go sit down. SAS serves Miami non-stop from the three Scandinavian capitals on alternating days in the winter. So whereas Stockholm usually gets forgotten when it comes to long-haul non-stop routes aside from maybe New York and a few others, in this case we get to fly to Miami without having to stop in Copenhagen, which is very nice. There are always tickers in my stomach. I love it. Hmm. Going to the airport, going to take the stars. Going, ah! Like I mentioned, I got an amazing fare for this flight. Almost a full year out during a fare sale that popped up, $266 per person round trip. In fact, I wasn't really planning on doing our annual winter escape from the cold and dark to South Florida, but this fare made it an obvious choice. And we used to live in Miami, so it was kind of like a homecoming.
This flight leaves at 3.25 p.m., which in February up at these latitudes means it's close to sunset as we get going. But flying west and eventually south, you get this curious effect, where the sun actually rises again as you chase it. Eventually we'll lose that race and it'll get completely dark, but this is a very unique experience getting an added dose of sunshine after the sun went down, and kind of coasting along in permanent sunset mode for several hours. All very cool. In the run-up to this, I found myself wishing it could have been the A350 on this route. However, I was really pleasantly surprised by economy on the A330. The aircraft is quiet, even if maybe not quite as quiet as the 350, and the cabins are in great shape considering some of their A330s, including this one, are over 20 years old. You really wouldn't know it. And the 242 configuration is really passenger-friendly. The only thing that would be better for us is the 767's 232. However, that aircraft is nearly extinct in this part of the world, so this is about as good as we can do in a economy, I think. It's a little bit louder on the A330 than on some of the newer generation aircraft that I'm used to flying long haul now, and also here behind the engine, it does get a little bit louder, although it's still surprisingly quiet, the A330. Considering that this specific aircraft is 21 years old, I'm pretty impressed at how quiet it is. And this is really comfortable up here in row 30. I'm thoroughly impressed by that. Plenty of space, great if you have kids. You don't have the width and the extra recline of plus, but more room here than in the front row of Plus, so I'm pleased. Now let's see how the service is, the food. I'm already impressed also that they're giving out a big bottle of water to every passenger. That's, that's actually kind of above and beyond, more than I expected anyway. This is a good movie, I love it. SAS is not known for their extensive entertainment selection, but I have to say, they had the right amount of kids' movies to keep mine entertained for hours. And there were a few things I could watch too. Also, these screens are nice, crisp with good resolution. I do wish they would load more full seasons of TV shows and maybe a few more movies for adults too, but the selection was adequate today. I was happy. There's also power at these seats. They serve a round of drinks, and here is the first weakness. You get one round of non-alcoholic drinks, and if you want any more, you have to pay. This to me is the worst part about the service. They were also charging extra for special meals like kids or vegetarian meals until recently. Thankfully I've heard they rolled that back after public outcry. I think that both of these policies probably saved them pennies while leaving a very bad impression for passengers. That's a high cost for a small savings if you ask me. I can see if you want to charge for alcohol, okay, but to charge passengers on a 10 hour flight if they want a second soft drink, that's a foolish policy, and it was the only real negative of this flight. Crossing the Atlantic, it's all very cloudy below today, but the sky does clear up just in time for us to catch views of Iceland, and then a little later, Greenland as well. I think we got pretty lucky there. And here's the meal. No choice, just beef lasagna for everyone. Or we could have paid to pre-order special or upgraded meals, but I didn't really see the point. Luckily, this is very tasty. I'm honestly impressed.
I manage to sleep a few hours and wake up as we're cruising along the eastern seaboard of the US. Not long to go now, and we get a nice juice and a simple sandwich for the pre-arrival meal. It doesn't look like much, but it's really pretty good. SAS really exceeded my expectations and economy today. I couldn't have asked for an easier way to get to Miami from Sweden. I really like the look and feel of the cabin, the food was surprisingly good, the big bottle of water is a real winner, and the service was all very pleasant too. Economy seats are economy seats, and no one is going to be raving about 10 hours in one of these. But as these things go, I found it very tolerable. We flew back in plus after I successfully bid points for an upgrade on the return, and those seats are much more comfortable just to sit in, so I was glad we did that for the overnight. But for a daytime flight, in the future, I wouldn't hesitate to fly SAS economy again, especially with the kids. Stay tuned for some highlights from the Florida visit, which I'll tack on to the end of this if you're interested. If not, thanks for coming along on the flying part of this video. Don't forget to like it, and I'll catch you next time. Maybe. That's what you find here. Daddy, maybe. Maybe.